Welcome back to CLI's Legalpreneurs Spotlight Future 50 series. In this series, we're showcasing thought leaders and doers in legal innovation, legal tech and AI all around the world. Today, I'm joined by Lisa Cazares. Lisa is the Chief Innovation and Legal Solutions Officer at Allens in Australia. Lisa, I just love your title. Quite apart from anything else, it's amazing. <laughs> um, Lisa and her team are doing some really amazing things on many different fronts. We're going to chat about at least one of them today, Airly, and hopefully we'll be able to chat about a few more. Airly is Alan's recently launched version of OpenAI's GPT models. It was developed with Microsoft and built on Microsoft's Azure platform. Thanks very much for joining me today, Lisa. I'm really looking forward to this discussion. A huge welcome to you. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. I, I wanted to kick us off by um, getting you to tell us a little bit about you, Lisa. I mean, what brought you to this role at Allen's and, and what do you do? What do I do with that delightful title of mine? Um, look, I'm I'm uh, really responsible for overseeing Alan's innovation agenda. So, um, and how I like to describe it, just in really simple terms, you know, really making sure that we're fit for the future and digitally enabled throughout. Um, so that can mean anything from working with our legal product lab to design and develop um, what we call practice efficiency solutions for our lawyers right through to something we're doing at the moment, which is um, designing and developing a firm-wide digital literacy program that we're going to be rolling out to the entire firm next year. Um, but in terms of what we brought, what brought me here, um, back in the day I was studying law at university and, and I finished my degree back then, but I really was quite interested in science and technology. Um, and I found my way into um, a firm in Ellison back at that time where I really loved that intersection of law and technology. And I thought, hmm, technology is going to have a pretty massive impact on this profession into the future. So frankly, my entire career has been um, in that space since, since back then. Um, through a few law firms since then and a service provider and um, then found myself at my longer-term home at, at Allen's. Good early choice, Lisa, I have to yes, say. Well, yes. I don't, don't know if it was strategic or, or dumb luck, but, yeah, it's been a great a great. But you'll journey. take it one way or the but other. But I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, look, we've, we've got to talk about Airly because you folks are really leading the way in Australia with this product. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about it. And kind of if we can go backwards to go forwards. So, mm. you know, how did it come about? What is it? What does it do? And I guess very importantly, to go back to what you've just said, how do you see this impacting the work of your lawyers and allied legal professionals as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, pretty early on, we've been looking at Gen AI, but really started looking at it in earnest back in sort of November last year when, you know, ChatGPT hit, hit um, all of our shores. And what we um, turned our mind to early on is, frankly, we felt that the best way to really understand this technology is to give our lawyers and our business professionals an opportunity to get their hands dirty, get yeah, the opportunity great. to use it in a true real-life work context um, so that they could really experience its capabilities, its potential, but also its limitations firsthand. And what we had done is we, we had indicated to people that were fine to use the publicly available version of ChatGPT for personal use, but frankly, we weren't comfortable. Um, it didn't have enter the sort of enterprise-grade security that we needed to be able to use it on firm and client work. And sure. we really needed a, a solution that we could be sure that our prompts weren't going back to open AI, weren't be being used to improve an overall AI model, things like that. So um, working with Microsoft, as you said a little bit earlier in the intro, um, leveraging their Azure open AI service, we built Airly um, off the back of that, which, which pretty much gives our people an opportunity to do just that experiment, test it on firm-related work, within certain guidelines and parameters and, and certain rules of use that we also publish at the same time, um, yep. but really to start to get a feel of what's possible um, and, and what's achievable using Gen AI, Gen AI technology. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of what we're using it for and the answer to that question, at the moment, really it's automating some of those routine tasks, so summarising lengthy articles into a short-form version, redrafting materials in a particular type of format, you know, advice into a one-page summary, for example. So I'd say, broadly speaking, assisting with drafting. But to be honest, what we did in parallel with Ailey is 
more of the secret sauce, I would say, is actually we um, launched a firm-wide um, ideas campaign. Yeah. Um, and what the intention was there is once lawyers had experimented and really got a view of what's possible, what the limitations were, and sort of started to upskill, that we would really um, progress through a campaign where they're servicing ideas. Um, and in, in three broad buckets is the way we tackled it. One was um, legal process improvement, like how can we get better at the practice of law? Mm. Uh, the second bucket was business process improvement, like the business of a law firm. Um, and the third was new client products or services. Mm. Mm-hmm. And through that process, our campaign actually closes this um, closes on the fourteenth, so not not too long to go. Um, but we've surfaced a whole range of ideas across the firm, um, and we we then are going to be kicking off um, a, an assessment and triage process, really narrowing it down to the top use cases that will then move to actually developing out the solutions. And I think that's where the real game changer will exist. The, for example, the ability to point it to the incredibly rich data sets that we sit on, for example, mm-hmm. and, and build solutions that enable us to inter- interrogate our mergers and acquisitions knowledge base or our foreign investment review board knowledge base and have a chatbot that's a lot more, I guess, intelligent um, and, and relying on high quality data, um, not only sort of publicly available data as in the version of um uh, the publicly available version of ChatGPT. And that's been a big one. I mean, it's overcoming those transparency, accuracy issues and and just powerhouse of the collective intellectual property that you'll be able to draw on too, I imagine, is fantastic. Yes, but I, yeah. I, I, I love this idea that you've engaged everyone because, yeah. you know, there's been there's been a lot of scary headlines out there and also some scary things done, by the way, by folks in the legal industry but I mean it's it's I think it's so important to get people engaged in it but also that they are the ones the people working with it are the ones suggesting this suggesting the solutions they're the they're the closest to it right Oh, absolutely. And, and that's what we really felt. Some of the ideas have and will continue to come from the top down, but a Ooh. whole bunch of them emerging from the bottom up because they're often the people feeling the pain of a manual task or repeatedly doing the same sort of exercise. And what we thought of, what we thought is once they get their heads around, huh, I wonder if this type of technology can help with that problem, that will really help to generate some of those ideas. And, and we really did, yeah, we have seen an uptick on you know, the types of ideas, where they're coming from across the business. Um, yeah, and it's been really terrific. It certainly hasn't been a partner down. It's been very much from both ends that, that ideas have emerged as we as we hoped it would. And I guess it, it's in many respects also could be a great collaboration, focus on collaboration and almost a team building exercise around oh, this as well, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a really exciting opportunity for some of our lawyers actually to use their skills in a different way. Yeah. Um, a few other things that we've done in parallel, um, when we start to develop up use cases, that'll frankly be our technologists working hand in hand with our lawyers. Like one can't happen without the other, frankly. Um, and we've positioned that time that the lawyers are going to spend, that they'll get billable credit for that work. So like they would matter work, we Mm. didn't want to provide a disincentive to get involved in this type of work. So we've created a framework for how they'll get um, billable credit for the time that Mm. they spend co-developing these solutions. So, you know, when you think about it, it's it's a great way to apply their legal skills in a whole, you know, new new way. Yeah. And and I think also, Lisa, more realistic. I mean, as these sort of tools really almost integrate with the human aspect of how a solution is arrived at or a problem is arrived at or something is delivered. Yes. You can't really separate those things out. This is tech and this is human. It's like this is how we deliver the service and it's all mixed in together. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for for mine that's quite exciting. And I think there's been, Mm. as you touched on before, there's been a lot of, you know, nervousness, will it mean the demise of our profession and what what will it mean for grads and will will, there, will we continue to have as many grads as we do now? Um, but I actually liken it to what we saw in the sort of discovery litigation space, you know, when predictive coding was first hitting our shores, you know, AI and what was that going to do to discovery and document review and, and similarly with contract review and due diligence. And what we've seen is that it has streamlined it it doesn't take as long to do. We can get to the key facts more quickly, but it means that the juniors doing that work are able to focus on the more um, substantive, interesting aspects of that job rather than 
you know, the manual, more mundane aspects hasn't done away with the need for that resource. It's just reframed the type of work they're doing. So I actually think a similar path will be followed with generative AI. We won't do away with um, juniors by any means, but how they do their work and what elements they focus on will, yeah, will definitely change. Absolutely. And, and I think in that lament sometimes, what we're lamenting is that they won't learn the same things in the same way as before. And the answer to that is they don't need to because right. there's different Couldn't things that need yeah. to be learned in a different way. So it's kind of a bit of a mindset adjustment there, I, I guess, as well. Mm. I think that's right. Just, just on that, Terry, I do yeah. think also we have a responsibility to, you know, bring our lawyers and business professionals actually along that journey. So, you know, I mentioned that digital literacy program uh, a sec ago, and we're hearing a lot about prompt engineering skills and all sorts of um, emerging, um, emerging skills and capabilities. But I do think with the development of different solutions and the emergence of new technologies, we all have a responsibility to really be taking our people along that journey as well and helping them build the skills they need to get the best out of these solutions. So I think, you know, one has to go hand in hand with the others to give people that comfort and confidence that, you know, their still skills are going to still be relevant into the future, um, relevant and valid into the future. So we've been doing a lot of thinking about that in, in parallel with, you know, developing early and, and progressing our sort of ideas campaign. Absolutely. And, and I think that responsibility, and you, you touched on it earlier, but also obviously front and centre is our clients, the responsibility to deliver yes. our yes. People services or solutions or products as effectively and efficiently to them and for them because the world's changing for them as well, right? Absolutely. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And if there are solutions and technologies out there that enable us all as practitioners to deliver a more cost-effective, higher value, faster solution, do we not have a responsibility to be pursuing those? And, you know, I think we do. So, yeah, as much about clients as it is, it's about our people. Yeah, absolutely. I have to ask you this question, and it's one I've been mulling over as you were speaking, which is, I wonder if we're almost in a chicken and egg situation. Like what comes first? Is the technology and then the skills or do mm. the skills then the technology? And I'm sure you've had to be working through that. What do you think about yeah. that? And look, I think chicken and egg's probably the perfect <laughs> phrase, actually, because in the some way, in, in the same way that we've put the technology in the hands of our people so they can start to develop those skills and start to experiment. Um that's the decision that we've made. Provide the technology so people can experiment, um, start to use these tools, and then build on that through formal capability development mechanisms. Um, but I don't think there's a one size fits all. Um, but we did we did feel that the practical needs to go hand in hand with a the theoretical and the training so that people could be practicing what they're learning. So that's yeah. why we went with that um, approach. But it is a little bit chicken and egg, um, to be honest. I don't, I don't think there's one answer to that question. <laughs> we'll continue to mull that one over, shall yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. See where we end up. Uh, yeah. Let's go a bit broader and just thinking about, I guess, law firms and the AI more generally and even beyond Airly and where you folks are at the moment. Mm. I know that that you have adopted the view that it's really important for law firms to be at the cutting edge of generative AI, AI emerging technologies more broadly. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen for the firms that don't jump in right now? Because there is still a bit of hesitancy out there, no, no doubt built around the horror stories that have come out and are now passing and dissipating. But yes. Yes. What, what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, look, um. Look, for, for, for mine in, I guess, my 20 years in this profession, I think it takes time to explore emerging technologies. Mm. It takes time to uncover potential use cases. It takes time to experiment building solutions, to build the skills of your people, evolve their ways of working. That all takes sustained effort and a sustained focus, and it's really difficult to do that stuff quickly. Um, and in fact, I'd say impossible to do that in a compressed time frame. So mm -hmm. for me, the tech's moving so quickly um, and it's going to be far more challenging for organisations that aren't making those preliminary steps to explore the technology, explore potential use cases. So I guess my short answer would be for those that aren't at least starting that journey, um, mm -hmm. 
it's going to become really challenging for them to be cost competitive, to be able to meet their clients' evolving needs, to be able to attract and retain talent even into the future. Um, And I I think it's going to be really hard to progress this stuff overnight. So, yeah, I'm very much a proponent of start small, start making incremental steps um, because I think, you know, it's not going to be something that you can transform the way you work in the space of months, um, be my two cents. Absolutely. And I guess, you know, I think I've kind of referred to it as the question and response functionality for want of a better expression. But I think that's here to stay and and just get and become more and more sophisticated because it's easy to use. It's a very yes. familiar pattern for most people to fall into. And yes. so if, you, if you're not on the ground floor with that, I, as I agree with you, it's going to be really hard. It'll be a chasm, not a gap, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it'll happen relatively quickly as well. I mean, we've seen how much has, you know, evolved since November last year to now. It's moving incredibly fast. Like, frankly, you and I were having a joke beforehand, just keeping up with the pace is is tough. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I think uh, if you haven't started, I wouldn't leave it too much longer to to at least start that journey would be be my thought on that one. Very, very good advice. (laughs) Very, very good advice. So... I wanted to kind of now jump ahead and ask you, in a way, what's next? You know, Mm -hmm. we've, as you say, we've come a phenomenal distance in a very short period of time. I mean, it's a blistering pace. So are we, are we looking ahead now in terms of maybe what you're looking at having developed early and other stuff that you're working on? Is it what's next in generative AI? Is it, Is it what's next in AI and what is that? Or is it a period of, look, let's just consolidate and see where we are and Mm -hmm. use that as a baseline and go from there? How do we approach even what's next? And should we even be talking about what's next because we're still so much going on now? Such a hard question. And as you say, things are moving really quickly. Um, For us, Airly is in some ways, I mean, as a firm, believe it or not, we've been using um, AI for close to a decade now. Um, so AI has been around, and that won't just be Ellen's, it'd be other firms who are using AI in a whole heap of different contexts as well. Um, but this, I think, to all of us represents a bit of a step change due to its potential, but also due to the fact that you don't require really very much, if any, technical expertise to be able to engage with it. Um, so for us, early is probably the start of that journey around generative AI. It's yep. really going to be what we're able to develop off the back of early. Um, when I talked about pointing to some of the um, incredible data sets that we sit on, um, you know, years of advising our clients on a whole range of different transactions, but also some of the really interesting um, legal focused LLMs that are out there, you know, Kelvin being one, there are others. Um, there's incredible potential there um, if we can get that right, if we can get the use cases right, um, which I think will be fabulous for our clients and, and, and for our people. So in terms of the, the, the strategy, different organisations are thinking about this in different ways, but experimentation is, I think, where a lot of us are at, you know, identifying a handful of use cases and starting our experimentation around developing solutions. And I dare say we'll learn a lot through that process. Um, learn a lot about what we don't want to do and what we do want to do more of. Um, so initially we are, as I talked about, starting on with those first two pillars, legal process improvement, business process improvement. But over time and when I think where we might get to further down the path is potentially, you know, um, the ability to d- develop more self-service solutions for clients, for example. And I think you know, for the types of clients we advise, there will always be a need for them to come to a firm like Ellen's for their most sort of complex, strategic, challenging work. That Mm -hmm. won't go away um, with generative AI. But is there an opportunity to provide our service for certain profiles of work in a different way to meet our clients' needs at a different price point? Now, still time will tell and it's still very early stages as to whether that's feasible, what that will look like. Um, But you can imagine a possibility of, you know, a, a FERB chatbot, a foreign investment review board, board chatbot, where which points to Alan's, you know, high quality precedence that a client could 
interrogate with some questions and it could also potentially prepare a first cut of a FERB application form. Like you can see the potential for this type of technology to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we're a little ways away, but I think that um, ability to package and deliver our services to clients in a different way through perhaps a more of a digital front door for certain profiles of work could be an interesting sort of area to explore and one that we are starting to explore. So and, that would be my further down the line um, sort like of answer to your question. I like it because it's also the opportunity for us, I think, more broadly as an industry, maybe it even the, the ecosystem at large, mm. to reconsider what we mean by value. I've never actually thought that we add our greatest value by hand completing variables in a form. Yes. You know, so yes. if that's yes. done... And yes. you and you're now having a much more engaged, somewhat more sophisticated discussion with clients with that information already there. Yeah. It just seems to me that that's really what we're great at. That's Absolutely. where we really add value. Absolutely, and that and that's what we think. That that's what our clients come to a firm like Allen's about, or, or you know many other firms. Mm -hmm. You know that that really challenging, complex legal legal problem solving. Um, so. Look, I, we think generative AI will be a tool. You sort of talked about other types of AI. Like other types of AI, it will be a tool to supplement how we work um, yeah. and really to elevate the skills of our people as opposed to replace the skills of our people. So, um, you know, really seeing it in the opportunity column rather than the threat, this is going to blow up the business model column. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I've I've got to, and I know that we have to close, but I've got to ask you this question. I was picking up on something you said earlier about experimentation. Mm. I suspect we're in a cycle of experimentation forever. What do you yeah. think? Wow, I like it. I might use that, Terry. <laughs> um, look, I, I think this will move so quickly that I dare say you might be right. I think there, because we will be experimenting based on current state, the technology will move while we're doing that. So it could be a, a, where I think you're getting is that continued evolution of experimentation. Yeah. Um, and certainly based on what we've seen the last six to eight months, you're probably quite right. Um, maybe answer that, I'll answer that question in a year's time and I dare say you will be right. But, yeah, <laughs> constant experimentation for at least the next 12 months, probably beyond, would be a, a good bet, I'd say. It also means you have a job for life, Lisa, So that, that would be, which would be a delight and pleasure for all, all of us. Thank you so much for your time today and all the very best with Ellie and all of the other amazing projects that you folks have on at Allen's. I really appreciated your time. Thanks so much, Terry, for having me.